Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Mists of Tirna side Mythic Plus guide for the first season in The War Within. Keep in mind that Blizzard did a few changes to the dungeon since the Shadowlands iteration, so even if you played back then, there's still gonna be new things for you. At the start of the dungeon, be very careful with the Durst Spite Claws, which are going to jump at people and leave a stacking bleed on them. They also have a buff that makes them increase the damage that players take by 10% for 20 seconds when they die, which is also stacking. But if you have a way to purge it, you only have to deal with the bleeds. The big guys have a channel that you have to heal through and they also have a huge front though, make sure to dodge it. The harvesters will be casting spirit bolts, interrupt as many of these as you can, but always save an interrupt for their big cast, Harvest Essence, which not only does heavy AoE to everybody in your party, but it also heals them. The Soul Cleavers will put a stacking debuff on your tank that increases their damage taken, simply dispel that, and don't forget to pick up a green mushroom from the side room which increases your primary stat. The Drust Breakers are going to keep spawning bamboo bursts on your feet, move away to avoid taking damage, and prepare a defensive for their furious trashing, which is a 6 second channel doing heavy AoE damage to everybody in your party. You have to kill two of these at the same time in order to unlock the first boss of the dungeon. Ingram Malok is going to keep casting spirit bolts, interrupt as many of these as you can, and Droman has a big frontal that you need to keep dodging. Occasionally he's going to cast Force Compliance, which is a burst of blue swirlies on the ground that also leave puddles behind so consider moving the boss away. Repulsive Visage is an AoE fear that you cannot stop, so if you don't have ways to break fear, make sure you stay away from the blue puddles. When Malok casts Embrace Darkness, he starts taking 80% reduced damage, and at the same time players have a dot on them, which is only removed when the big guy Droman reaches 20% health. At this point, he stuns Mawok for 15 seconds and during this time, he takes 200% increased damage. So generally, you want to focus the big guy and save your cooldowns for this burn phase. Rinse and repeat until Mawok dies. After you kill the boss, don't forget to click on the seat to update the respawn point in the dungeon. And then you have to do the maze. Each room in the maze has four pillars. When you stay next to them, you reveal a special symbol that looks like this. Each symbol has three main characteristics, they're either a flower or a leaf, they either have a circle or they don't, and they're either filled and solid or they're empty. You have to figure out which symbol has one of these three features as unique, meaning that it doesn't repeat in the other three symbols, and that will be the door that you have to go through. As for the mobs in the maze, the defenders are going to cast Expel, charging to a player doing a bunch of damage and knocking them back. And they're also going to cast Mist Ward, they leave a big blue swirly on the ground that denies a large portion of the area where you have to fight them, so you have to navigate your way around. The Stalkers are going to cast Mist Veil Bite, which leaves a nasty bleed on your targets. The Tenders have a Norge the Forest cast that you need to interrupt, as this is an AoE heal. You also have to interrupt the Shaper's Bramble Thorn Cold Cast, which puts shields on them and roots everybody in your party doing AoE damage. And the Stingers will charge players and leave a nasty dot on them that you have to dispel, otherwise they're going to explode for more AoE damage in a small area circle. In the maze, you're also going to fight one of three possible mini bosses. They have pretty standard mechanics, frontals that you need to dodge, big swirlies on the ground that you need to move out from, and if you get the dragon, make sure to move him out of the big blue circle. The second boss is going to fire arrows to each player, make sure to move to the side to dodge them. The boss is also going to cast party cake, which is going to one shot your tank, and the only one who can interrupt that is the tank himself. Free stack is going to summon an ad that's going to fixate and start chasing players for a few seconds. You can CC it and slow it down, but if you fail to do so, make sure to run away because if it catches you, you most certainly die. When the boss casts guessing game, you go into phase 2 where the boss himself is immune to damage. Instead, four illusionary clones spawn with the same symbols that you saw in the maze. You have to quickly figure out which one has the unique treat and kill it as fast as possible to get back to phase 1, as the rest of the mechanics keep happening, but now everybody in your party is taking heavy AoE damage. 
rinse and repeat until you kill the boss and once you jump down the waterfall don't forget to click the next seat to update the spawn point in the dungeon. The next area features gorgers which are going to throw acid globules on the ground. Big green circles that not only do damage but they can also knock you off of the platform. The acid gullets are going to cast volatile acid, that's a dot on the player that does damage around them as well so spread out and use your defensives. And then the reavers are going to charge players and leave yet another poison debuff that you have to deal with if you have no way to dispel it. Some of the packs also have stack horns, make sure to interrupt their stimulate resistance which puts shields on the mobs around them or their stimulate regeneration which heals them. They're also going to cast Acid Nova, nothing that you can do about that, you just have to heal through the debuffs that they put on people. After you navigate through that last area, you'll be at the last boss, Tredova. She's going to cast Acid Expulsion, green swirlies on the ground that you need to dodge and stay out of as they leave puddles behind. However, she's going to remember how you dodged the swirly and next time this mechanic comes up, she's going to try to predict that you're going to move in the same direction and cast extra swirlies on those locations. The longer the fight goes on, the more swirlies you have to deal with. The next mechanic is called Mind Link, she targets one player and connects him to the rest, doing damage to everyone affected and you have to move 40 yards away in order to break those links and stop the damage. Coalescing Poison sucks everyone towards the boss where there's a big green circle that explodes for a ton of damage so you want to make sure you're not in sight when that happens. She's also going to cast Accelerated Incubation, she summons 4 little adds that fixate a player, you want to run to your tank, slow them down, CC them and cleave them down if you're the one that they fixate, and keep in mind that upon dying they explode and leave more green puddles on the ground. And if that's not enough mechanics for you, at 70 and 40% Tredova starts casting Consumption. Heavy AoE damage to the whole party for 14 seconds while you have to dodge big white swirlies on the ground. And you can interrupt the cast but only after you break the anima absorption shield that she casts on herself. All the mansion mechanics will keep overlapping with each other if she's not casting consumption. And if you manage to navigate your way through them and kill the boss, you also complete the dungeon. Make sure to navigate your way to the subscribe button as well as there's more Mythic Plus guides and Mythic Plus content coming up for The War Within. I'll see you guys there, thanks for watching, now get out of here.